front on contact, set the umpire. Very interesting, Brampy now. And he wins the ball. Oh, oh, watch out. Yeah. Aaliyah charging through Matt Crouch. He just gets up. Aaliyah's deep. He drives it low. Aaliyah is there and it falls in his lap. Aaliyah, Aaliyah to bring them to their feet at the SCG with his first goal ever in front of the home fans. Leicester, the full forward. Aaliyah. Hurt himself and thumped it down the wing. Aaliyah, eyes only for the footy. What a beauty. Well done, Aaliyah. But almost not given enough space. Scott Sowell, Aaliyah! What a ripping tackle! Oh. Aaliyah been in great touch tonight. What's going on, Port fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. And today we're going to be talking about the trade between Port Adelaide and Sydney. Port Adelaide have secured Aaliyah Aaliyah for a future second round pick in what I would call as a handy pickup. He certainly, uh, as soon as his name popped up in the rumour mill, I really, really um, thought about it. I actually thought he'd be a great addition to the side. I reckon he's a very handy player, as I said. Um, a massive utility, mainly a tall defender, can pinch in in the ruck. And a lot of people have been saying in the media that he is a Hoff replacement. Wouldn't say he's a Hoff replacement, to be honest. He's a very, he's a versatile player, but he's a little bit different to what the Hoff was. But nonetheless, he's a great addition to the Port side. So we're going to have a look and see exactly how he's going to improve our side and what he will bring to Port Adelaide. He signed a four-year deal with Port Adelaide, so that'll see him here for a few more years um, at his new destination. He travelled uh, to Adelaide yesterday to discuss and you know have a tour of the Alberton facilities, and it must have worked really well, the, the tradition of the club, uh, the recent success on field in 2020, and I reckon he was very much attracted to the playing group because, uh, well, we have a very, very tight-knit group and we talk about how the connection of the club certainly was uh, one of the main aspects of our driven success in 2020. Um, and I reckon that would have been one of the main attractions for him. Definitely, I think, with Aaliyah Aaliyah coming to Port, uh, I feel as if uh, his, his role may be something that will be very much a discussion point because does he fit in our back six? Yes, he does. He's going to be the tallest bloke down there. Does he fit in with our structural aspect? Yes, he does because, as I said, he's a tall defender. He can play that intercept marking play, but he also can play on the number one key uh, forward of any other pl uh, any other forward in the comp for the opposition. So his addition is not only a very credible one, it's also something that I think will... Play Havoc for the best 22 next year because there's going to be a lot of different options we can go down. Obviously, we're going to put him down uh, down back with uh, the likes of Cleary, McKenzie, and Jonas. Does that mean someone like a Burton and someone like a DBJ may push up a little bit further because we have those starting uh, four defenders? Hear me out. There's a possible option that Todd Marshall goes out. Uh, one of those key defenders start on the bench. And we play that one main forward and Charlie Dixon. We go a little bit smaller down there. Um, and then you have Pete Laddams and Scott Lysette rotating as a resting ruck down forward. Now, probably that's a more an unlikely option because we like to have that uh, structure down forward. And Marshall complements that a lot more. He's, it's more as a sacrifice role, really, to get Charlie Dixon in the game. Um, and it didn't quite work. Uh, towards the end of the season because both seem to have... Well, the rain killed us really in the prelim, but that's besides the point. Ali Ali will be able to um, create that runoff halfback a lot better with those intercepts because we play a sort of game that is an intercept based on intercept marks and intercept footy, and Hamish Hartlett's been playing that role really well. Tom Jonas does it really well. Um, and you know then you've got your more one-on-one -on -one defenders with Cleary and McKenzie, which... I wouldn't change. Cleary's underrated. I feel you know, a lot of people don't give him enough credit. And he's had his moments this year where you could probably uh, validate him not getting enough credit. But in saying that, he's been one of our best defenders over the last four years. McKenzie's been a surprise packet. Jonas plays that intercept role, and he's going to be able to play that a lot better now considering Ali Ali will jump into that defense. You start to think, all right, how does this structurally move? I think we'll play more of a two-defender-based bench now. 
um, and you'll have your one forward and one midfield rotation because you'll have that resting forward who'll be a midfielder, someone like a Robbie Gray, Zach Butters, Connor Rosie. Um, then you'll have the forward rotation, whether that's Marshall coming off the bench. Um, George Yardis might find himself through there next year. So it'll be a different dynamic for Port, and I think that's a great, great thing to have and I've seen the positivity for Ali Ali joining the side is unreal. I've I've actually loved seeing everyone's comments underneath, um, you know, Port's Facebook posts and the rumor mill building up to this. A lot of people wanted it, um, and you know, he's 26 years old. He's from Kenya. He's played multiple games for Sydney. He's actually been very impressive. I enjoyed his game that he played against Port in 2020. Um, where he played predominantly uh, as a second ruck rotation, but was very, very good down um, down back. I don't I can't remember if he played on Charlie or not, but when he did play on Charlie, he was actually pretty decent. Um, but other than that, you know, he's a great addition, and I'm really glad we got this deal done. It's a very simple deal. You know, it was second round pick for uh, 2021's draft, um, and. Sydney we have their salary cap issues. So basically we've said, here, have this pick. We're probably not going to need it as much as uh, you guys will. And we're helping you out. So let's shake hands and uh, send each uh, and trade target off. And yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very impressed. Very, very impressed that we are. Because uh, this, this was a deal that wasn't likely. You know, he was contracted. Um, and he's been in the top 10 for intercept marks. For the last couple of years, now, you know that the, the likes of Jeremy Howe and McGovern are in those lists, which are higher class than Aliyah Ali, um, would be considered. But to, with our team, it's definitely more role players than it is star power, and that's why we got so far because everyone played their role. Mackenzie, perfect example. Jonas as captain. Cleary was outstanding um, for most of the part. So it's. It's a different dynamic, and it's something that I reckon will work and work well. So, I'm very round of applause for Port Adelaide because this is a deal that I was actually keen on. Keen on more than the Aratio Fantasia deal, that's for sure. So, when I heard we were offering pick 29 for Aratio, I thought, let's send it off to Sydney. Let's get a Lear Lear, bring him here, and let's shut down our trades. Instead, we sent off a future second round pick. Sydney were happy. We still have that, have that pick 29 and multiple picks in the bank for Lockie Jones and uh, Taj Schofield and uh, Jace Burgoyne. I think it's another one that um, might be on the on the, on the the eyes of the Port Adelaide recruiters. So definitely tick of approval from myself and I'm sure a lot of people were uh, very pleased when this deal was announced. So let me know in the comments below what you think Aliyah Ali will bring to the club in 2021 and beyond because he's a, certainly a great addition to Port Adelaide and I'm very much looking forward to seeing him in Port Adelaide colours and the prison bars against the Crows in 2021. While I'm here, might as well update you on everything else that Port Adelaide has been doing in the trade period. Well, to be fair, not a lot. Um, there's definitely been a lot of talks with Orazio Fantasia and Essendon. Aratio has been training with a whole bunch of Port players across the off-season you know, the likes of Zach Butters, Tom Jonas, he's been around South Australia for a while now. I think he's expecting the deal to get done. I think a lot of people are expecting the deal to get done. And I would suggest when that trade deadline starts at 3 p.m. Well, not the deadline. The trades are allowed to go in at 3 p.m. onwards tomorrow. On Well, that's Thursday, whenever you see this. Uh, so... Pick 29, I reckon, will probably be the deal that gets it done. I think they're just playing hardball, Essendon. Eventually, they'll think, bugger it, we've got better fish to fry. And hopefully, they do. And hopefully, it's a, an earlier deal that gets done. Because whilst we're all sceptical on Orazio Fantasia, nonetheless, this play-by-play -play business of who's going to get a better deal out of it, no one's winning in this case. Pick 29, send it off, get Orazio, finish it off. Deal's done. Go go, go go, get someone better, Essendon, if you can. Well, poor fans, that's it. That is uh, a little update on the trade period and everything happening with Port Adelaide. Once again, a massive uh, welcome to Ali Ali to the Port Adelaide Football Club. Great addition, and I very much look forward to seeing him put out performance week after week next year and be on. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content. My name is Anthony, and as always, 
Kamapan.